Okay, welcome to lesson two. We're going to introduce some probability. Uh, we're going to talk about it, make some definitions, and some basic rules. So we like to start basic. We love drawing cards from a deck. We also love throwing dice. So we're going to go ahead and roll two six-sided dice for just ease um, of understanding. I'm going to make one orange and one blue. There are all sorts of questions you can ask after rolling these two dice twice. Uh, what are all the possible outcomes? How many ways can I roll a double? What are the probability that the dots add to seven? Here, they add to five. So what is the theoretical probability model for the sum of two dice? These are just a few of the many questions we could be asking here. So we're going to start off, we're going to define the sample space. So this is the set of all possible outcomes that could happen. Um, it tends to be like, it's like an italic or curly looking S. So depending on who's writing it. So S, if I'm just looking at all the outcomes I could have, I could roll a one on the orange and a one on the blue, a one on the orange and a two on the blue, and dot, 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 all the way through uh, six on both of them. And there would be 36 different combinations. So they're shown right here. There are 36 different ways. I'm not gonna write them all here, but you get the idea. And then once I've defined my sample space, a lot of times we're going to focus on a particular event or set of events. So it's a subset of that sample space that we're interested in. So for instance, maybe A is, I'm, we usually use capital letters from the beginning of the alphabet. Um, obviously you can change it up, but we tend to use capital letters from the beginning of the alphabet. So roll doubles. So like if I were to roll one, one or two, two, that would be within my event. It is a subset of all the possible roles I could do. So once I've defined my, my uh, event here, so roll doubles, I can determine the probability of that happening. So the size of event A. So if I'm looking at rolling doubles, I can roll one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, by five or six, six. My size is six. There are six different ways I could accomplish this. So probability of, I'm gonna write doubles here. I could get six out of, and then I would count, okay, well, what are all of the possibilities? There are 36 different rolls. So that reduces to one sixth. You can go ahead and round like 1.67. It's 1.6 repeating, but you get the idea. There are some basic rules of probability we have to make sure we observe. So all probabilities have to be between zero and one. And this makes sense in some senses because uh, if you have a probability less than zero, you can't have a negative probability. It just can't happen. You can't have a probability above one because a probability of one means it always happens. You can't happen more than always. Just like you can't happen less than never. So quite honestly, you should it ends at zero and ends at one. The probability of the sample space is one. So if I combine the probabilities of all possible things in the sample space, the probability is one. And then we like to talk about the probability of not A. We call it the complement of A. So just some notation is that A superscript C. So the probability of A complement is one minus the probability of A happening. One way to think about it, I had a friend, I'm like, oh, that's gross. They said, everything in the universe is cheese or not cheese. And I mean, they're right, they're cringy, but they're right. And that's the idea, A or everything that isn't A. That's basically what that means. So if, when you add them together, you should get one. So then we like to go ahead and uh, put our, we like to list the possible outcomes and we like to give the probabilities for each of those outcomes. So you can put them into a function, you can put them into a table or a graph, um, but we like to have some neat way to summarize what are the possible outcomes and what are the probabilities associated with each. So here we're gonna focus on X is the sum of the two dice. Get right to two dice. So I, one, I could roll one on both, and the, that's the lowest I could roll on both. I could roll a two. I could roll a six on both and get 12. 
I could roll any number in between, any integer number in between. And here, theoretically, like it shows that if I were to roll my dice infinitely many times, that about 2.8% of the time, I would roll snake eyes or a, a two, a sum of two. Same with rolling a 12. I can put this into a plot. So here are all the possible outcomes and all the probabilities associated with each. So as you can see, like, hey, seven's the most likely to happen. Its bar is the tallest. Uh, two and 12 are the least likely to happen because their bars are the shortest. So if I were to go ahead, I can go ahead and, and try to approximate this by rolling the two dice. So if I can roll it, I'm going to first roll it 100 times. Well, this is just a, an experimental model because I rolled it 100 times. If I rolled my dice another 100 times, I would get a different experimental model because I don't expect my dice to do exactly the same thing every time. And so showing here, about what, 14% of the time I rolled twos. Um, oh, sorry, about 9% of the time I rolled twos, about 14% of the time I rolled threes. When I increase it to a thousand rolls, this is looking a lot more like that theoretical model. And it will, as I have more and more trials and more and more observations, it's going to look closer and closer to that theoretical model. Um, so that, what we're using there is the law of large numbers. So it tells us the more observations we collect or the more trials we collect, uh, the proportion um, associated with each outcome is going to come closer and closer to those th theoretical probabilities. So then we have an example uh, before we end this lesson. So Anu goes ahead, they flip three coins. We want to know the probability that they flip these three coins, and they're fair coins, and exactly two of them come up tails. So we want two tails and one head. Exactly. So we're going to assume, since it's a fair coin, the probability of heads, H for heads, is equal to the probability of tails, is equal to 0.5. So heads, tails. My sister, I don't know how she does it, she can almost always seem to make it like flip and like kind of land on its side. I'm not that skilled. We're just going to assume heads and tails. So for me, first thing I like to do, I like to say, oh, well, here are all my outcomes. Well, first, coin one. I have two possibilities. Coin two has two possibilities. Coin three, two possibilities. So I have eight different outcomes I should have. So if anything adds to anything oh, besides eight, I know something's gone a little sideways. So I've written these out a few times. I like to do the three heads, then the two heads, and then the one. So Heads, tails, 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 heads, tails, 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 heads, tails, tails, tails. Mm, do definitely double check. There should be eight of them, and there are. So I'm focused particularly on exactly two tails and one head. So there are three scenarios. So I want the probability of heads, tails, tails, or tails, heads, tails, or tails, tails, heads. And we'll get into, in the next lesson, the idea of disjoint, but I can end up breaking it up, heads, tails, tails, plus probability of tails, heads, tails, plus the probability tails, tails, heads. Because if this first event happened, I know the second didn't, and I know the third didn't, so I can break them up that way. So the probability of the first one, probability of one half for the first one being heads, one half for the second being tails, one half for the third being tails. And it's going to be the same for each of these because it's a fair coin. Note these probabilities would change up a little bit if it were not a fair coin. So each one has a probability of one eighth because every single one of these outcomes is equally likely with fair coins. So I'll have one eighth plus one eighth plus one eighth three eighths. That should be what about point three seven five. So 
uh, about 37.5% of the time, a new flips three coins uh, that are fair. We would expect exactly two of them to be heads and one, sorry, exactly two of them.